Evolution has turned humans into great innovative explorers and navigators. We are very good at local navigation to find our way in known environments, but we are not so good at global navigation. I will come back to that. For local navigation, all our sensors collaborate to solve a very complex task that machines and computers cannot compete with. Vision is our primary sensor. It builds a local model of the surroundings in which we move. We support this with prior knowledge of how such surroundings look like and contextual information we are used to in such environments. Uh, we complement with force feedback from our feet when we move and other senses. The inner ear is quite advanced. It, it provides motion and orientation. We have a good sense and of what is up and down, our rotational speed and acceleration. And we can use that to dead reckon our movement over short distances, even with our eyes closed. That is, we have a redundant sensing system. On a larger scale, we use a world model with the landmarks to navigate ourselves in known environments. This is also a very complex problem that computers are struggling with still today. But when it comes to global navigation, that is to find our position in terms of longitude and latitude, we are often lost. We need tools to navigate on large areas to find our longitude and latitude on the globe, or in a restricted area such as Manhattan, or even in a shopping mall at Manhattan. The way we solve this task daily is by recognizing landmarks and comparing to a map, mental or physical map of landmarks. That is also something we need to learn. But there are actually animals that are superior to us due to evolution for global navigation, like migrating birds and animals in the sea. So this particular bird was able to navigate to Africa and back again to exactly the same nest as it left 297 days earlier in Lund. We actually computed this path based on detections on sunrises and sunsets from the little device on the back of the bird. So human evolution was not aimed for globalization, while some animals actually evolved this ability. But we are inventive. To foresee the future, we need to look at the history. So the ancient sailmen, sailors relied on known landmarks. Uh, for instance, the Northern Star uh, relates to your heading and also latitude. The moon and sun relate to time and also latitude. Uh, known landmarks were used for navigating close to land, comparing to a map. And the lighthouses introduced new landmarks that were easy to recognize in distance and in darkness. And the light also defined the precise headway. The inventive sailors also created new tools for navigation. So maps have been around for a long time, of course. But the invention of a sextant uh, introduced a way to measure angle differences very accurately. So, for instance, if you have the horizon here and the northern star here, that angle defines your latitude. And if you see the moon and the northern star, that angle difference gives you local time. And time is, of course, a very important concept for navigation. Uh, for instance, if you see the sun at the highest position, it's midday, 12 o'clock. So you know local time, but you need Greenwich time to conclude your longitude. Uh, the first generation of clocks used for sailors uh, gave a drift of tens of kilometers every day in longitude. But uh, due to an invention in the mid-18th century, the drift was reduced drastically. And when James Cook sailed around the globe, the final accumulated error was less than 10 kilometers. There are basically three different mathematical concepts for navigation. Uh, the first is triangulation, that is to compute the intersection of two or more lines that can be bearings to landmarks. We have uh, trilateration, which is to compute the intersection of two or more circles 
which can be the distance to two landmarks. Multilateration is more complicated, but suppose that you have two distance differences that constrains your position to be on a hyperbolic function. And with two such distance differences to landmarks, you can compute the intersection of two hyperbolic functions to deduce your position. The uh, ancient sailors used uh, calipers and rulers to solve these problems geometrically on the map. Computers do it today very efficiently. Computers can, for instance, use uh, multiple radio transmitters for this task. So, for instance, you can use directional antennas to compute uh, the angle to the transmitter. You can use uh, time of flight or signal strength to compute the distance to the transmitter and apply trilateration. Or you can use the time difference of two signals on two, two synchronized transmitters to constrain the position to a hyperbolic function. Basic principles used very often. Today, the principle, uh, in principle, all our navigation tools at land, at sea, and in the air rely on satellite navigation. It is based on multilateration, comparing signals from satellites uh, when they arrive to our devices. GPS has been around for a couple of decades. You can find them in almost all of our vehicles, devices, and gadgets. But unfortunately, GPS has no redundancy. That is, if GPS fails for one reason or another, there is no backup to take over. Obviously, GPS does not work indoors or underground, but there are also situations outdoors when it fails. We have the so-called Manhattan problem, uh, where high buildings reflect the radio signals that gives you outliers and uh, bad positions. Uh, I visited Manhattan last summer and tested myself, and the walk I did in one hour was not reflected by GPS at all. And I did certainly not walk 30 kilometers in one hour, as indicated here. Some five years ago, Google introduced its uh, position service. It's based on redundancy, just like the human sensing system. At first hand, it uses GPS whenever available. Second hand, it is, uses uh, the, the closest Wi-Fi access point that exists in its uh, database that is used as a landmark. In third hand, uh, it applies uh, triangulation based on signal strength from the cellular system. So this is an excellent example of fusion of different principles using redundancy. And it also brings us to the future of positioning systems. So to get redundancy that provides position anywhere and any time, we need to uh, use many information sources combined according to the sensor fusion principle. So we can, for instance, have uh, radio transmitters, uh, including GPS, that provides uh, an estimate of, of absolute position. We have inertial measurements mimicking uh, your inner ear that can be used for dead reckoning between the landmarks. We have uh, maps and uh, landmark databases to provide the context of the surroundings. And we have sensors for situational awareness to make a local map for local navigation. All this information has to be combined. Today we have seen a spectacular demonstration of autonomous vehicles. We have uh, seen uh, uh, demonstration platforms with multiple antennas for GPS providing exact orientation of the vehicle. We have ground base stations providing centimeter resolution of position, and etc. We have seen the Google car and Teslas uh, driving for long distances autonomously using uh, uh, short range sen sensors such as radar cameras and uh, uh, laser scanner. But we still have a long way to go to get a positioning solution that works anywhere and anytime. Our smartphones today have a variety of sensor modalities. And smart positioning systems 
are coming in our smartphones that extend the Google solutions with the new modalities and the new information sources. So using all these information needs a framework for how to teach a computer to navigate and compute the position. The mathematical concepts of triangulation, etc., are still very relevant, but we need a context, we need a, a framework for how to fuse all this information. And what you see here is maybe my most famous equation. Yeah, some of you have seen it before. Uh, it has been used by thousands of researchers for positioning applications, and we have used it in several applications as well. So let me show you some domain-specific solutions we have encountered in our research. First one, uh, yeah, finding your way in a shopping mall can be a nightmare, you all know that, certainly. Uh, but you can get a blue dot on your map by combining sensor fusion of Wi-Fi access points, Bluetooth beacons, and inertial measurements in your phone for dead reckoning and get exact trajectory of how you move inside the shopping mall. And this solution we developed has been used in hundreds of shopping malls around the world, including one at Manhattan. What you see here is uh, a replay on when uh, Søren Bobach won the World Championship in Sprint Orienteering in Venice a couple of years ago. So the red line here is what is broadcasted live. It's based on the GPS on his body. Uh, the blue line is what was annotated by Søren Bobach after the race, and it can be seen as a ground truth. That was the way he actually ran. And the red line and the blue line deviates. Venice is not Manhattan, but still there are high buildings reflecting the GPS radio signals. The green line comes from a sense of fusion algorithm my student implemented that fuses information from GPS and the map only. And it gives a feasible trajectory, very close to the ground truth, and much more worth looking at than the, uh, what is broadcasted today. Next example shows how a telephone installed on a drone can be used to find another telephone hidden on the ground. Why? Yeah, the application can be to find a missing uh, person or a victim from an avalanche or earthquake assuming that the telephone is still in operation. So by using the principle of tri uh, trilateration of uh, signal strength measurements on the phone, on the drone, the operator was able to locate the hidden phone with a few meters uh, accuracy in less than one minute. So drones can be a great help for localization on the ground. And the next example shows how, the, how a thermal camera can extend the human vision with the temperature scale. And that can be used for monitoring animals on a savanna, like here. But also to find hidden persons in the forest, which we actually have here. And the application can be to save endangered animals and protect them from uh, poaching. So to conclu conclude, there is no super sensor for positioning. Unfortunately, GPS is a state of the art. It's a universal tool today. Uh, it is good enough for outdoor infotainment applications. But the solution that provides your position anytime and anywhere requires a domain specific combination of sensors and prior knowledge and models and maps. I showed you solutions how to find your way in a shopping mall. Uh, improve GPS in urban areas, uh, monitor animals, and uh, locate missing people. But there are thousands of other applications out there. Uh, we have a steady stream of new applications arising all the time. The basic principles of navigation will be the same, but the challenging challenges for the inventive human explorer will continue from phone to drone and further. Thank you.